Good morning, very early morning, and welcome to a very abbreviated version of The Angry Astronaut. Sometimes things just come up that piss me off, and I just feel like I need to share them with you. This was not supposed to be my next topic. <laughs> Find myself saying that a lot lately, but in any event, I just had to come out and say it. I really didn't think that I could slam on Boeing anymore. As a matter of fact, in my most recent video, I was suggesting the possibility that the SLS might actually get to the moon first. But then I think about the Starliner and recent developments with that, and there is only one thing that I have to say. Boeing blows part three. about everybody knows about all the glitches that took place with the Starliner during its test flight, and now these glitches just keep cropping up one after another as if they're only just discovering them, or perhaps because they were trying to hide them the whole time. We do know that Boeing was involved in some definite covering up, but Yet another significant glitch came up recently that has led to some very decisive action on the part of NASA, finally. Okay, we'll quickly take this screw up by screw up. The takeoff went all right at least, but that's when things started to go wrong. As we all know, or most of us, there was a timing issue which caused the vessel to burn entirely too much of its fuel at the wrong time and therefore made it impossible for it to achieve the proper orbit. However, what we have recently discovered is that there is a communications glitch as well, that if NASA had been able to communicate with the vessel, it could have corrected the problem and put the Starliner into the proper orbit. But that didn't happen. So there's two screw-ups before the ship even got to the incorrect orbit. And then, on its way down, the problems continued. During the descent, a valve mapping error could have caused the crew and service modules to collide, leading to a burn-up which would look something like this. NASA actually made the statement that they almost lost the ship twice. Imagine if there had been a crew on board. So this time, NASA is not playing around. Well, kinda. Because Boeing is still in the running for this. They have to execute no less than 61 corrective actions of some kind. Almost all of them software related. Seems to me they should take the entire computer system back to basic design. So why am I pissed off? I mean, let's get out the pom-poms. The Crew Dragon wins. They're going to be going up in May. Well, here's what I'm annoyed about. This means we only have one choice. There's no real competition. Really, there never was. So. Let's hope that the Crew Dragon succeeds, because even though Roscosmos is probably too classy to make a big deal about this, Vladimir Putin is probably laughing his ass off at our incompetence. And if the Crew Dragon doesn't manage to successfully dock with a crew on board in May, 
If there are any further problems, we have nothing to fall back on. That's one thing that pisses me off. And the other thing that pisses me off is that a lot of people don't know that there was actually a third choice, one that NASA completely ignored. This ship doesn't get a whole lot of press coverage, but believe it or not, it's going to start taking cargo runs to the ISS in late 2021. A completely innovative and different vessel that of course resembles the space shuttle, the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser. This was NASA's third choice and they discarded it in favor of two competing space capsules. Now the Dream Chaser, although because of congressional idiocy, has to ride ULA vehicles, it's perfectly capable of going up on a Falcon 9. And in spite of its small size, it can also carry up to 5,000 kilograms worth of pressurized cargo, very competitive with the Dragon. And the crude version of the Star Chaser was capable of carrying seven astronauts, just like its competitors. And those engines you see going right there, those are Orbitec Vortex rockets using propane and nitrous oxide. And so here comes the Dream Chaser towards the ISS, just like any other resupply vehicle or crewed vehicle had it been given the chance docking at exactly the same point as the space shuttle did. The Crew Dragon probably will. Everything pretty much identical except for an extremely innovative design that never got a chance to perform. Although it will as a cargo vessel in a little over a year. And by the way, its reaction control or maneuvering thrusters use an ethanol-based fuel, which is not particularly explosive, nor is it toxic, making it a very safe ship, especially when docked to the station. Really, this was a highly competitive vessel. Every bit as good as the Starliner. In fact, I would say probably a hell of a lot better. And so here it comes back into land as and as one might expect. After reducing speed appropriately, it re-enters very much like the space shuttle did. And comes in for a landing like a glider. Again, just simply a totally different design and more inventive and innovative. Why was this discarded? Now, of course, critics would just say that the Dream Chaser is Space Shuttle 2.0, and the reason that it wouldn't work is because it's too complicated, too innovative, and just too dangerous. But because it's so much smaller than the space shuttle and so much simpler, thus far in all of its tests, it's done a very, very good job. Because it is so small, it's not going to take nearly as much heat when it re-enters, therefore not nearly as much problems with its heat shield as the shuttle had. Really, there's no reason why this shouldn't have had a chance to compete. And yet, for some reason it lost. And I'm thinking it lost because of lobbyists and because of politics, not because it was an inferior vessel. And now, in spite of all of these problems, in spite of all these glitches and the 61 corrective actions or whatever that need to be taken, the Starliner is going to ultimately eventually be taking crews up to the station until, in my opinion, it eventually kills them.
We should dump this thing. Go with the dragon exclusively and give the Dream Chaser another chance. It certainly deserves one because thus far, there haven't been nearly as many mistakes. I'm the angry astronaut. Stay angry about space.